It's the year 2050. Imagine a world where AI has evolved to levels of super intelligence, reshaping every aspect of life. How did we get here? In this video, we're going to use Nick Bostrom's book, Super Intelligence, to understand what he actually means by an AI super intelligence. We'll then discuss the three unique ways he thinks we could actually achieve super intelligence. But first, who is Nick Bostrom and why should we listen to him? Nick Bostrom stands at the forefront of AI in future studies. He is a pioneer. He's authored over 200 publications and wrote the influential book, Super Intelligence, which I've just finished reading as I am on a mission to learn everything I possibly can about AI. And I can't deny it's one of those books that hurts to read. It is the Bible of AI. If you're in the field, it's mandatory reading. Whilst parts of the book are speculative, a lot of it is actually grounded in theoretical science to the extent that it builds on existing knowledge and theories in computer science, artificial intelligence, physics, philosophy, and many other related fields. I like to imagine it as Oppenheimer probably did with his nuclear bomb. The science made sense, so he tried to build it. Yet there was always the giant possibility that he was wrong. And there was that part about him setting fire to the entire atmosphere, potentially. But we'll let him have that. Nick is also famous for some of his other theories, like the simulation argument. And just a word of warning, if you go down the simulation theory rabbit hole, you will stop feeling real. So what actually is AI super intelligence? Think of NASA's Mars rover, navigated largely by AI. It isn't just a remote controlled robot. It's a pioneer of super intelligence in space, making decisions it would take much longer if controlled solely by humans down on Earth. Super intelligence isn't just some fancy term that Nick's made up. It's a real and significant concept. Bostrom defines it as an intellect much smarter than the best human brain in practically any field. Nick has envisioned the three most likely scenarios in which we would reach super intelligence. The first one he calls speed super intelligence. Speed super intelligence could achieve what humanity has done over a millennia in a day. Nick's exact definition of speed superintelligence is a system doing everything a human can but much faster. He's talking orders of magnitude faster, like the speed of light faster. To visualize this, compare a commercial jet plane, which has a cruising speed of between 500 and 600 miles per hour. Now contrast this to the speed of light, it's 1.07 billion times faster. Faster. This could be the operating speed of this super intelligence. So I like to play a bit of poker from time to time. So let's create our first hypothetical scenario in relation to what this speed intelligence could potentially do. Okay, so it's well known that humans' pupils dilate when they're lying. So picture this, a final table at the World Series of Poker. The stakes are sky high, $12 million on the line. It's a classic showdown, except for the fact that there's a super intelligence involved. So it's human human versus speed super intelligence. The human player is falling behind and he needs to make up some ground, but he's holding the worst possible start in hand in poker, which is 7-2 off suit. But he's determined not to be outdone by the machine. So he decides to bluff. He thinks the AI will find it too risky to call. So he slides all of his chips to the center and confidently announces, all in you machine scumbag. So on the other side of the table, the speed super intelligence and analyzes the situation. The AI with its speed of light processing is seeing everything in hyper slow motion. So he takes note of the human's pupils and nips for a quick pint and some nuts and gets chatting to a girl. He secures a number. Obviously he does. He's a speed super intelligence. He's incredibly charming. By the time he's back, the human's pupils are gigantic. It is as clear as day to the speed super intelligence that the human is lying through his teeth. He calls. The board rolls out with the AI having worked out his 90% chance advantage, he didn't stand a chance. He came so close to winning, and now it's all over. To be fair, it's not the end of the world. Don't feel too sorry for him. Second place is still 6.5 million. In Nick's book, he gives a similar example of an AI watching a coffee cup fall in slow motion. The point is to 
get you thinking about the sheer scope of scenarios that this speed super intelligence could be used in. It would change the world. Now for Nick's second possible scenario, collective super intelligence. Imagine if every genius throughout history could collaborate in real time, combining their knowledge and creativity. A network of minds working together, surpassing the sum of human achievement in a second. It's not just about an individual AI system like the speed super intelligence. It's about a symphony of collective intellectual systems. Now this concept is a little bit harder to grasp. At least it was for me anyway. Nick's precise definition from the book is a system composed of a large number of smaller intellects such that the system's overall performance across very many general domains vastly outstrips that of any current cognitive system. So let's think about this. An argument could be made that humans are already a collective super intelligence. We share ideas across the globe and those ideas are iterated on, much like I'm doing now. We have corporations like Apple, Tesla and Google, all operating with thousands of employees. These companies are just smaller subsections of collective intelligence within our planet as a whole. Each employee carries out their own narrow sub-processes that relate to the end goal of growing the company. For example, let's imagine someone working at Tesla. We'll call her Sarah. Sarah has been assigned her tasks and so long as she carries them out, she doesn't need to worry about Elon Musk's master plan, which probably involves using Tesla to generate revenue to colonize Mars. It doesn't matter, her tasks still get done and she's playing her part in building the company. In his book, Nick Bostrom introduces us to the concept of collective super intelligence through a very interesting thought experiment. Imagine a planet called Mega Earth. This planet is just like ours, but with a population one million times greater. If we consider Earth's current population of around 7.8 billion, Mega Earth would have a population of approximately 7.8 trillion individuals. Now, Nick has concluded with a rough estimate that there is a 0.0000001% chance of Einstein level brilliance occurring in any given population. And so with this increased population on Mega Earth, we would arrive at 700,000 individuals with the same intellectual capability of Einstein. When I first read the book, that just sounded to me like an enhanced version of our current collective intelligence. Where does the super and the AI come into play? To understand this, we need to go back to our companies. Let's think about how these companies are run. You've got office politics, clicks, arguments, people refusing to do a certain task because it's not in their job description, gossiping, laziness, and a myriad of other bull problems. Trust me, I've had many office jobs. It is by no means optimal. And this is where AI collective super intelligence comes in. Each of the 700,000 Einsteins on Mega Earth would act as a vital component within an AI enhanced network. Rather than working in isolation, these Einsteins would be interconnected. Their genius amplified and augmented by AI technology. This incredible AI integration is what transforms collective intelligence into a collective super intelligence. And now let's dive into the most conceptually challenging type. And Nick's third possible scenario, quality super intelligence. Nick's exact definition from the book is a system that is at least as fast as a human intellect and vastly qualitatively smarter. In the movie Limitless, one of my all-time favorites, it's amazing, the main character, Eddie Mora, discovers a pill that unlocks the all potential of his brain. And this pill grants him extraordinary cognitive abilities. Like Eddie's pill, NZT for any of you that hasn't watched it, which allows him to access untapped areas of his brain, quality super intelligence signifies a leap in cognitive function far beyond what's normally achievable. Eddie's transformation isn't just about thinking faster or knowing more. It's about a significant change in the quality of his intelligence. He doesn't just enhance his existing skills. 
Ethics. He develops new ways of thinking and problem solving. Ones that no human has ever experienced before. It would be like adding new dimensions to our thought processes. Have you ever tried to imagine a color that doesn't exist? Try it now. It's literally impossible. Every time I try and do this, for some reason, my brain takes me to the bottom of the ocean as if that's where this undiscovered color may be hiding. Maybe beneath a jellyfish or something. Why am I talking about jellyfish again? If you watched my last video, you'll understand. But honestly, give it a second and try to imagine this color. You couldn't do it, could you? Let me know in the comments what color came to mind. Mine is always magenta for some reason. So Eddie Mora's journey in Limitless is more than just a boost in brain power. It's a glimpse into the profound nature of quality super intelligence. Much like trying to imagine that color, it's near impossible to comprehend. But I tried my best, and so did Nick. Okay, so now you know, according to one of the world's leading experts on AI, what the future could hold. But He's not the only expert with these ideas. Have you ever thought about the possibility of living forever? I know I have, which is why I made this video here, which you should watch next, about the man who literally refuses to die and how he plans on doing it. Peace out, mate. Thanks for watching the video.